Let's create a little program to read a switch and light a light when the switch is pressed. You probably can't get much simpler than that. The environment for programming is called Quartus. We'll start completely from scratch and see how it goes. All right, it's going to ask for project names and that sort of thing. I've already created a folder to place it in. And I've been calling it Switch LED. We'll call the sketcher the FPGA program the same thing and place it there and the top level entity will be named the same thing so let's go ahead and do that and right now it's asking for adding files we don't have any yet and it's asking for the part type it's a Cyclone 4 E target device is an EP4 CE6 E22 C an it looks like there isn't the C8N but this is going to probably be close enough we'll select that and next eh, leave all those settings the same and go ahead and finish and now we have a product our project created let's go see if we can auto detect the part type here if we go into program device we don't have any sketches or anything yet or anything to download but if we hit auto detect uh, it comes back and said encounter devices with JTAG ID for device 1, please select your device. So let's select EP4 CE6. And it comes back and shows it. So it looks like it did find the device. It didn't so much auto detect it, but uh, hopefully that'll be good enough and it'll work. Alright, let's go ahead and exit out of there. File, close and that'll save the CDF file which knows about that JTAG chain. Now the thing to note is that the only part we see there in that JTAG chain is the EPL or the FPGA itself and that indicates that the programming device is slaved off the FPGA. And that's similar to the WaveShare EP4 card which did something quite um, very much similar to that. Go ahead and save that in the output files and see what we can do next. Without any written documentation, the one thing that we do have marked on the card pretty clearly in English is the 26-pin I.O. connector. And there's a 3.3 volts connection, which would be the I.O. voltage for the FPGA, hopefully, and a couple of grounds, and then pins that correspond to FPGA pins, presumably. So let's go ahead and hook up a little circuit with a switch and an LED. and try to write a little sketch to read the switch and write out the LED. Um, you'd be tempted to write blink, but to do blink you'd have to create a counter and that's a little more work than what I want to try to do. Here's the setup that we have. We have a little card that's got a push button switch and a pull up resistor on it. It's also got a GVS connection, ground, voltage, and signal. And that's hooked up to the power from the card as well as the input. And the LED goes between ground and the output pin of the FPGA connector. I've gone ahead and created a little VHDL program. Um, it's beyond the scope of this video to do a VHDL tutorial. There's a lot of them out there. Um, hopefully this will work. It's pretty simple. Went ahead and added it to the files by right clicking on files. And let's take a look at the program. It's pretty simple. It uses the standard libraries actually doesn't need, I don't think, uh, these two libraries down here. Let's just comment them out for the moment. And then it creates an entity which is a switch LED, same name as the sketch itself or the program itself. Inputs are the switch, a clock line which I don't think we need but I have defined, and then an LED one. And the code really uh, uh, doesn't need the counter anymore. This is took it from the old example. And all he really needs to do is to read the switch and write it out to the LED. Uh, let's give it a shot and see if this works. If we go ahead and hit start compilation, we get a fir our first error. And if you're a VHDL expert, you probably know what it is already. The error we're getting is that it doesn't like, I think it doesn't like the dash in the number or the name. So let's uh, go ahead and figure out how to rename it. I removed the file from the files list and I'm going in through File Explorer. Let's try renaming it there and reloading it again and see if that works. While I'm there, I'm just going to get rid of the backup file because I really don't need it anymore. 
Let's see if we can then add that file back in and if it will compile. A little quirky feature here. Um, you have to select it like that, but if it's a single file, it doesn't show up on the list down here until you hit add. And once you do that, it's added. So let's go ahead and try to compile again and see what happens. Uh, let's see, it's complaining about something here again. Oh, it looks like we didn't fix the entity names inside of here. Get rid of that. That was sort of the goal, but uh, let's try that and see if that makes any difference. Hopefully that's all of them. Let's go ahead and try it again. It'll ask me if I want to save it, and I do. And hopefully it'll compile this time. Oh, I must have missed a line. I'm sure you spotted if you're watching. Ah, top level design entity is undefined. So it's not finding switch LED as a top level entity name. I'm going to have to go figure out how to change the entity name. I think the way to do this is hierarchy select the switch LED which is the entity name and that seems to be the problem settings and then let's try general and it lists it there so let's try to change it to just be switch LED and see if that works this time processing start compilation okay uh, looks like we got past that error and uh, looks like it's compiling we'll pause the recording and pick it up after it looks like it compiled successfully. Uh, what I think we need to do next is then go assign those pins. And when you pull that up, it shows some pin numbers here. I think this, this I'm not really sure what channel the clock is on. So I think I'm kind of stuck there, but I don't think it's being used by this by the sketch anyway, or by the uh, VHDL code. But I do know where the LED and the switch are because I wired them up. Uh, let's take a look and see. The switch is on 98. So if we go over here to location and try to enter that, it'll give us a pull down. And we can hit pin 98 out of the scroll down list. And, excuse me, that was 99 for the LED and 98 for the switch. Let's see if that works. 98 for the switch. One of the other things I'll do while I'm here is set the I.O. standard voltage. I'm sure if you know Quartus, you probably know it better than me. I just do this sort of brute force way through all the pins. Same thing here for this one. I think there's a way probably to do it globally, maybe through some uh, voltage references maybe up in here somewhere not really sure uh, I think I'll just use leave the clock on the default there I don't know if this code is using it or not I don't think it's registered it might be I'm not really super familiar with all of the VHDL syntax it's been a long time we can close out the pin planner and then we'll try to compile again and see what happens it should include the new pin assignments there Okay, that compiled okay. Let's try and upload that program to the device. If we hit, uh, we can see it loaded it. It's output files, switch led.sof. That's uh, program is the SRAM inside of the FPGA itself or the array inside the FPGA. If you want to permanently program it, program it into the flash you have to do some uh, machinations I'll, I'll probably record a video on doing that but if we hit start let's see what happens okay it said it was successful now the LED went off on the external LED and if I press the button the LED goes on I'll try. okay let's go ahead and remove the clock in just for uh, the sake of not having it in the sketch hmm wonder why that didn't work.
This does confirm that the labeling on the connector is correct. We are putting things on, on the pin, that the switch pin, and taking them out on the LED and pressing the button routes the signal through the FPGA, so we're verifying that the download works properly and that there's really an FPGA there. Um, the chain showed it up when I tried to do it. If I do auto detect, it uh, goes out and goes after the chain, gets the same result. So it's, it hasn't changed, and that's probably a good thing.